All right, quick little video about free radical substitution. This is where you take an alkane, that's all single bonds between carbon and hydrogens, and you replace some of those hydrogens with a halogen. It can be F2, Cl2, Br2. Some teachers, I imagine, could ask you about I2, but I've never actually seen that in the real world. The reason that free radical substitution happens when you react an alkane with a halogen and not an addition reaction like an alkene does is because there's no double bond that can attack these halogen atoms. These halogen atoms need to be made reactive all on their own. And that happens in a step called initiation. In initiation, you're gonna take your halogen, Cl2, Br2, whatever, and you're going to shine UV light onto it. When you do this, the bond between the two BRs breaks and you get Br with seven electrons. So you actually get two of these and these are called free radicals because they have an odd number of electrons. Now, according to the octet rule, atoms want a full shell, which is usually eight valence electrons and so these are unstable they will be very reactive with other things in order to try to get a stable octet. The first step of propagation, or what happens to these BRs, is that these BR radicals will react with the ethane, which I'm going to write here as C2H6, and steal an HOA. That gives you HBr, and it leaves you with C2H5. One of the hydrogens is gone, and the carbon is left with an unpaired electron. Now, that is also unstable, so it goes on to react, and perhaps it reacts with another Br2. That gives us C2H5Br, that carbon, or rather that C2H5 radical, steals a Br away from this new molecule of Br2, brominates the ethane, and leaves you with a bromine free radical in the end. So take a look, the Br dot, or the Br free radical, was used up in the first step of propagation, then that intermediate went on to react and reproduce the Br radical. The Br radicals here are a catalyst because they are used up and then later reproduced. If you take a look at the overall reaction between these two, you'll notice that the C2H5s cancel and the Br radicals cancel. You end up with C2H6 plus Br2 makes C2H5Br plus HBr. It looks kind of like a double displacement reaction, but there's a lot more going on to it than that. You need this free radical to make this reaction happen overall. So, it cycles and cycles and cycles, and each Br radical can catalyze the reaction or bromination of a whole bunch of different ethanes. How does the whole thing come to an end? Well, that's a termination step. There are three possible terminations here, and they are the simple combinations of any two free radicals. Here we have a C2H5 radical reacting with a Br. I've got a Br reacting with another Br. And I could, in theory, get two C2H5 radicals reacting together. Whenever two react, <laughs> whenever two radicals react together, the unpaired electrons pair up, and you end up with no radicals. These are called termination because they stop the propagation of the free radical from molecule to molecule. Huh? I hope these titles make sense now. This Br2 would need to be re-broken up by more UV light in order to reproduce the free radicals that catalyze the reaction. Here you end up with the product you want, C2H5Br, but you've used up the Br radical, so you'd need to reproduce some via this reaction again. And here, when you have two ethyl radicals, you end up with C4H10, which means when you do this reaction, you actually end up with a little butane coming out in the end. Mm. 
tough to believe, but two ethyls can react to give you a butane. Okay, let's recap. You can initiate free radical substitution using UV light to break up a halogen. It gives you two free radicals. Those free radicals rip a hydrogen off of an alkane, create HBr or HCl or whatever, and give you a free radical alkane. That free radical alkane steals a Br from another molecule of your halogen, reproducing your free radical and giving you a halogenated, in this case brominated alkane. This is a catalyzed reaction where the catalyst is the free radical halogen. The reaction terminates whenever two free radicals come together because you need free radicals to catalyze the reaction and as soon as you know, the catalysts are used up, the reaction stops. Cool? Cool. One other thing to mention here is that you are not limited to removing one hydrogen. You can take this, remove another hydrogen, put on a second Br, take off another hydrogen, put on a third Br. Technically, you can do this forever until all of your carbons are all brominated. Depends on how much Br2 you start with. But in terms of grade whatever you are, chemistry, this is all you'll need to know. Best of luck.